Hello, welcome to the new section, Feed Forward Neural Networks. Without further ado, let's get started with the first video implementing single and multi-layer neural network. Let's understand the perception. First, we need to understand the basics of neural networks. A neural network consists of one or multiple layers of neurons, named after the biological neurons in human brains. We will demonstrate the mechanics of a single neuron by implementing a perceptron. In a perceptron, a single unit performs all the computations. Later, we will scale the number of units to create deep neural networks. A perceptron can have multiple inputs. On these inputs, the unit performs some computations and outputs a single value, for example, a binary value to classify two classes. The computations performed by the unit are a simple matrix multiplication of the input and the weights. The resulting values are summed up and a bias is added like this. These computations can be easily scaled to high dimensional output. An activation function determines the final output of the perceptron in the forward pass. The weights and bias are randomly initialized. After each epoch, the weights are updated based on the difference between the output and the desired output multiplied by the learning rate. As a consequence, the weights will be updated towards the training data and the accuracy of the output will improve. Basically, the perceptron is a linear combination optimized on the training data. As an activation function, we will use a unit step function. If the output is above a certain threshold, the output will be activated. A perceptron is able to classify classes with 100% accuracy if the classes are linearly separable. First, we will import the libraries and dataset. We then subset the imported data using these lines of code. Let's plot the data for two of the four variables with this code snippet. As you can see, we've plotted the distribution of the two classes. To validate our results, we will split the data into training and validation sets. Next, we initialize the weights and the bias for the perceptron. Before training, we will define the hyperparameters, that is, learning rate and number of epoch. Now, we will start training our perceptron with a for loop. Here, we have saved the training loss and validation accuracy so that we can plot them. The resulting training loss and validation accuracy are shown here. Next, we implement a single layer neural network. We start by implementing the simplest form of a neural network, a single layer neural network. The difference from a perceptron is that the computations are done by multiple units, hence a network. As you may expect, adding more units will increase the number of problems that can be solved. The units perform their computations separately and are stacked in a layer. We call this layer the hidden layer. Therefore, we call the units stacked in this layer the hidden units. For now, we will only consider a single hidden layer. The output layer performs as a perceptron. This time, as input we have the hidden units in the hidden layer instead of the input variables. In our implementation of the perceptron, we've used a unit step function to determine the class. In the next video, we will use a non-linear activation function sigmoid for the hidden units and the output function. By replacing the step function with a non-linear activation function, the network will be able to uncover non-linear patterns as well. In the backward pass, we use the derivative of the sigmoid to update the weights. Now, we will classify two non-linearly separable classes with NumPy. First, we will import libraries and dataset. Then, we will create the training data. Let's plot the data to show the two classes using this code snippet. As you can see, we've plotted the distribution of the two classes. Now, let us normalize the data to make sure the center of both circles is 1. To determine the performance of our algorithm, we will split our data. A linear activation function won't work in this case, so we'll be using a sigmoid function. Next, we will define the hyperparameters. 
We will initialize the weights and other variables. Let's run the single layer neural network and output the statistic. The output during training looks like this. Moving on, let's build a multi-layer neural network. We will extend the number of hidden layers from one to multiple layers. Adding additional layers increases the power of a network to learn complex non-linear patterns. As you can see, by adding an additional layer, the number of connections, also called trainable parameters, increases exponentially. Now, we will create a network with two hidden layers to predict wine quality. This is a regression task, so we'll be using a linear activation for the output layer. For the hidden layers, we use ReLU activation functions. We will start by importing the libraries. After that, we will load the dataset. The dataset wine quality red.csv can be found at this link. Next, we will split the data for training and testing. Further, we will print average quality and first rows of training set. Here, we can see an example of the output of the training data. An important next step is to normalize the input data. After that, we will determine baseline predictions. Now, let's build our neural network by defining the network architecture. Next, we will define the callback for early stopping and saving the best model. Then, run the model with a batch size of 64, 5000 epochs, and a validation split of 20%. We will now print the performance on the test set after loading the optimal weights to find the test accuracy that is 64.06%.